In this demo, you will see our complete Prenect workflow for our packaging and sheet fed label customers. After job creation via our Prenect cockpit, we will dive into one up preparation to optimize the PDF for production. We will create the layout and see how easily and quickly we can process recurring tasks like adding marks or optimizing the distribution of the PDF files based on their given amount. Once that is done, we schedule the job for production, send the job to plate output, press and post press. We run the production on press and post press devices. In the end, we have a look at the production feedback provided. Okay, uh, here is the cockpit uh, UR or our uh, Prenect Production Manager version 21. And uh, now I want to create a new job in the cockpit, a packaging job. And uh, I defined here a job number. Just and in next step, I define the customer. And uh, here you can define the sequences, uh, the processing sequences. Here I define the due date and uh, finish. Now I get a new job here in the list and double click. And uh, here we have the working steps uh, at the upper side. And um, we have, if you are the user in the commercial uh, part of the cockpit or production manager, maybe you have different UI. For example, here you have uh, pages. Now I have a one ops or under product description, I have an option product part. You see these options because uh, you see when you are a packaging user, member of packaging user here. And before I go into the details and to create the production job, I prefer to uh, show you the main components of the packaging jobs. And uh, for example, one of the main uh, parameters or a component in the production, uh, in the packaging production job is the CAD file. This uh, CAD file uh, may contain a layout, as you see here, we name it cutting die in the workflow. And here we have a one-up, a single one-up, and the name of this tab in the CAD file is shape ID in the workflow. And we will see when we use this information. And the other main part is, of course, this uh, PDF. For example, this is the graphic file and uh, you already familiar with that. Now, in the job, I want to create the articles. For doing that, I click here in the product part and uh, I define here a product. For example, this is the Zitrovital Green and article number, it's the unique number for this product, which it is very important in this packaging job because till end of the production, you can trace your product with this number and this information. If you know the shape ID from job description, you can define uh, this information here. If you don't have at the beginning, after layout creation, we get this information, I will show you. And then delivery quantity, I just defined small amount because we want to print it and the every each product each packaging job can uh, have more than one product and i defined here the second product the article number and the delivery quantity should be 1000 then apply and now i have two product then said okay 
and I get this product with this defined information. In next step, I want to add PDF. Before that, I add some uh, template or this is the qualify and prepare template. Uh, what is this? Um, this is the sequences. This is a qualified sequence. This is a prepared sequence. We have several options inside these sequences, which uh, then when we add the PDF into qualified sequence or into the job, the content of the PDF is checked according to the parameters which define here. And after that, we send it to the prepared sequence. In this prepared sequence, we can define this color conversion, the, how the transparency should be handled or other details parameter for each part of the graphic file, images, fonts, and so on. And as soon as PDF goes through to this sequence, it will be prepared for the production. And now I add these sequences also into the job and now want to add the graphic file. Of course, you can add uh, by this add files or you have another option you can add them by uh, drag and drop or per drag and drop i just add them and here i decide this pdf is related to which article that i define this is the orange and i add the second one that is the green and Now it is a uh, process by uh, qualify and prepare. And uh, you can see here, uh, we add two PDF and now the process is finished. Of course, after this process, we get reports for each steps that we uh, had. And by double click here, we get the report. This is the pre-flight report. You get detailed information about the down process, for example, the amount of the warning. Uh, these warnings are listed here. And uh, as soon as you click here, this uh, warning is open with PDF toolbox and you can edit uh, this warning. And uh, this report is remaining in the job. And uh, now we have a prepared PDF for production. And in next step, I'm going to create a layout with interactive Sigma station. And uh, we already assigned the PDF to product that we defined here. And you see here the article ID, which assigned to this product. Now I create a layout and define here a name for the layout and say, okay. Now the interactive mode of the Zigna station, this is the imposition software in the integration manager and the Zigna station. And under job, we have uh, job information comes from cockpit. And next step, uh, we should define here work mode. It's automatically changed to packaging work mode because we define article information in the cockpit. And as soon as we define article in the cockpit, the work mode changed to packaging. And here we have default marks, predefined marks, which are visible here. And in next step, I define plate from a standards menu or your own folder and define the work styles, single-sided, work and turn, all of them can be used in packaging mode as well. And here I select a material. This information comes from central data center. This is the MDS. And in next step under packaging is the steps that I should or I can open a CAD file. And uh, as soon as I open this wizard, you have here you are able to import several file format, which file format we support. I think 
uh, most of the CAD files, which you can import them into Signal Station and to edit or create a layout with them. You can open a layout you, which you already created in Package Designer or any other CAD softwares. You can open this uh, finished layout or you can just uh, open a single one up or you can again uh, send uh, open a PDF. Now I want to open this PDF. I don't have here any layout inside the file and here you are able to define the filters the, for the color line type and so on. Just and as soon as you open this PDF into Signal Station, this, uh, the Packaging Pro, this plugin is open and it is the plugin, this is the CAD software inside the Signal Station. It helps you to create your own or edit your own uh, CAD files. Um, the data that you see here, the tabs, it depends on which file format is open into Package Designer, uh, sorry, into Packaging Pro. And uh, here we have some tools uh, here. You should pay attention here. You should consider that Package Designer cannot be replaced by Packaging Pro. This is Packaging Pro is just a small CAD tool that just uh, help you to uh, handle this CAD information in the production job. But you have, uh, there are some limitations. You have just necessary tools just to edit the one up to create layout or 3D model. Now I just very fast edit this one up. And uh, for example, I should uh, change this line type. We have here these line types, predefined line types. And I want to change this uh, line types to the cutting line. And I want to extend these lines here. I have here the extend tools and again i have i want to create here a creasing line we have here the object and we should select the creasing line to draw a new line and we have here a tool to measure the objects here we have option to measure the the uh, distance between these lines and for example these dust flaps to be sure that every component uh, are draw uh, correctly and here we have the the dust the height of this dust flap is bigger than this one we can reduce the height of this dust flap. We have here this uh, offset tool. We should define here uh, how much it should be reduced. Then I just uh, define that line. Here is the plotting. I just select it and change it to cutting here and extend these lines to other these uh, lines and then cut the rest of these lines. Now I have a new dust flap or edited dust flaps here. And uh, of course, here we can create a 3D model. If the 3D model is not available in your file, we have here the options. As soon as I click here, there, the 3D model is generated as well. It can be animated here also. You can, if you assign the content in Signal Station, the graphic file will be visible here. For example, uh, for handling this 3D model, uh, you now you have just uh, one step 
that all panels uh, here, I just change here the uh, view type, and all panels are folded here just in one step, but we have here an option. We can add another uh, step, upper side, lower side of these panels. For example, then you decide which panel, each panel has a unique number here in this list. You can select which panels should be folded up in the first step. For example, I said that all of these panels should be folded in first step, so I just select them. For example, uh, this one and send it to the first uh, step, this one. And this one, for example, and this one. And you can see here I have a two step. And after each step, we have a 3D. And of course, we have here the another option. This is the production phase. Uh, for this production phase, uh, for example, you want to simulate this one-up after folding carton glue. You have here some predefined uh, template. Uh, then you can uh, select a template which is uh, most similar to your design. And in just four steps, you can define the uh, folding uh, steps there. I just mo uh, move the mouse here just to define where is the folding line. And now in this direction, I go in just by mouse move on this drawing and just click where should be placed this folding lines. And here we have defined the production phase. And you can see here, all of these uh, folded steps are visible there. And here we have um, the production phase. Here is the 3D model. And later I will show you it with the graphic design. Now just let to create a layout because I want to send it back to uh, Zignal Station. And um, here we have uh, several options to create a layout. This is the automatic one. Here is the semi-automatic, we name it. And in just four steps, we create a layout. Now I create a layout with the automatic one. And uh, under machines, we have here uh, Heidelberg machines. Of course, in the preferences, you can define which machine should be visible. You can add also third party machines. Here you select uh, layout should be created for uh, which machine. For example, we have this one and just recalculate it. And uh, for example, here, all of the created layout by, packa uh, by Packaging Pro are listed here according to the number of one-ups and waste percentage. And you should select which one you want. And uh, then you select it and say OK. And here you have a layout. And uh, here we have a finished layout, of course. Under one up, we can uh, create also bleed here. The bleed uh, we have here a tool. This is the bleed. We define the important and unimportant area. For example, we know that uh, on this panel, there uh, the main information of the product are visible here, and we defined it as an important area. And here we defined, uh, we, we show it or we define this type of the lines. This is the unimportant area. It means that these panels are hidden uh, after uh, folding the box. And here is the glue flap. 
you can decide it should be uh, without bleed or any graphic information or it is just an important area. Then I click here uh, to generate the bleed and for um, after that we get a black line here that we already define name it as a bleed line and now I go back to layout and after generating the bleed, we see that we have here some conflict between this uh, one up and uh, we can solve this conflict just by some click by these tools. This is the clip at conflict resolution. We have here several tools. You can, of course, do it manually or you can do it automatically. You define uh, how much uh, the area important and unimportant area should be reduced and the rest of the uh, areas conflict area should be resolved by rest by middle path because sometimes it's not clear for the software uh, which uh, panel is important unimportant because un two it's possible that two unimportant area place uh, beside each other and then I said okay and uh, here I get an information, how many conflicts results. And I said, um, okay. And now we don't have any more conflict between one up. And of course, after you edit the one up, you can export this one up directly here to a, a specific file format. It helps you. For example, later, if you want to open it again with uh, Packaging Pro Zigna Station, it doesn't, it's not necessary to edit all of this line type and uh, that I did now. You can uh, export each part of the project. For example, you want to send the layout to your die maker. You can here save also to this uh, different file format. And now we have a one-up layout 3D model. And I want just to mention here some specific parameter, but let me just assign the PDF uh, content to the layout. And then I come back again to Packaging Pro. After we create the layout, I just select, I just click here on the OK. And now layout is sent back to uh, Digna Station. Here is the cutting die and here is also the shape. This is the shape ID that at the beginning of the demo I mentioned you. And uh, here we have a content. I just here turn on the symbols. You see the number one on all of these uh, one up, we name it index number. We can see now the effect of this index number. I just assign a PDF, but uh, here I have two products. For assigning the second product, I should change this index number. I just select this one up, and by right click, I select change a station index and I just write it two. And now we get here index number two, and now I can assign the uh, second PDF. Okay, and now we have uh, two PDF which assign, of course, I'm here under packaging mode. And as you already saw, I, uh, we have two products with two different delivery quantity, which I calculated here uh, manually. But if you want to have an automatic calculation and to optimize the sheet, you should use the ganging optimization. But it is another workflow, which we mention it later in another demo. Okay. Let me see, uh, let me just 
place some uh, mark on the uh, layout. I want to place some uh, marks on a one-up. Uh, we have here mark resources. You know already that we have the standards folders. We support a lot of mark here, but some of them are very popular in the packaging production. And one of them is a station number. And uh, for placing that, I selected and per drag and drop, I added to a single one up. And then as soon as I place it, we get here a number. And by right click, I define here how these numbers should be placed on a, a one up on a press sheet. I select these variants, said OK. I get number one. And now I want to place this mark on all of the one-ups on a press sheet. Then here set to all one-ups. And what is this station number? This is the number of uh, product on the press sheet. For example, in the production, you can easier find this one-up on the press sheet. For example, you are looking for box uh, number two. You know that where uh, where place uh, has placed this uh, one up on the press sheet. And another useful mark in the packaging workflow is a page cut index. This page cut index mark is very helpful for post press operator. I mean, uh, die, uh, die cut operator. I select it and per drag and drop add it to this area of the one up. And uh, it is a text mark. One number shows the station number, and another one shows the first part of this box. If I place another mark in this area, I just change the orientation of this mark. But uh, what is this mark? This mark is, uh, we place it on the waste area. And this mark helps a post press operator easily to find this cutted area. For example, operator want to replace the knife tools and uh, on the die board. And uh, sometimes it is, it is the time consuming process that to find uh, this part is li related to which box on the press sheet. This mark said that, okay, this is the part one and it is beside this uh, box number one. And here is the cutted part uh, number two. And uh, when I place a cut, uh, page cut index here, it gets this, the box number eight, and it is the first part of this box. Um, okay, we you as I told you, you are free to choose uh, which mark should be placed on the press sheet, on the one-up, of course. And uh, other another mark that we use always, or most of the time uh, in a packaging job is an uh, ink pickup bar mark. You can create directly on a press sheet. You can you create it as a template and use uh, there. I already create a template and per drag and drop, I place it on a press sheet. And mm, you can see that the, the free area on the press is filled out with this ink, which calculated by Zigna Station uh, according to number of uh, colors in a PDF. And this marks help uh, press operator to reduce the make ready time and uh, to get uh, easier or faster the color balance. Here is this, uh, some marks that we, sh we can place them uh, on the press sheet. And uh, now, as I mentioned before, I go back again to Packaging Pro because I want to show you the 3D model 
with the content. And here we have a 3D model. Of course, uh, with the right click here, you can decide uh, which content should be visible here. And uh, you can animate it there. And uh, I see a problem here. Just, this is not a problem, but we are here free to change the folding angle just to correct this folding area. Okay, anyway, we have here a 3D model. We have also here the option to export this 3D model to the customer. We have a, a here several file format, HTML, PDF, uh, which is most popular, and I save it as a HTML. And uh, here is a 3D model that we have, and this Lego Heidelberg logo can be replaced by the customer logo. And here we have again production phase that we already uh, created uh, under 3D model. Okay, here is also the 3D model that we have. Then I go back to Zigna station and Here we see also the articles, PDFs, and of course, uh, this uh, layout can be saved as a template in Zigna Station and uh, used as a resources. And now we have a packaging layout. We can send it to cockpit to, uh, and send it uh, to the production. I just send it back to cockpit and we will see how we can produce it. Before I give the demo to Daniel, I just uh, want to show you here under product description that I uh, show you at the beginning. Here I have an article, here is the shape ID. As soon as you assign the PDF to the layout, the shape ID is visible here, and also you have here a 3D model. Okay, now layout is there, and I ask Daniel to continue. Yes, hello. So I will share my screen. So I'm working on my cockpit, working on the same system as Parvin is, and I open the job haven't just created and I steal it from her. Um, yes, the layout creation is done. So the, the creative part is, is more or less finished and we will now start uh, going into the production. If we look back again to the process net, we just see that we have page preparation steps inside there, but we have not defined any production steps yet. Um, so the easiest way is, after the layout is created, to do the process net by starting the planning assistant. You can start it from here, you can start it from the imposition tab. And this wizard guides you through the procedure to define each production step, assign machines, assign scheduling information, and finally finalize the, the production job uh, that you can start a production. So in this case, I select that I want to customize the process net and of course do uh, the calculation of the amounts. So I'll go to the next step and I see here all products part which were defined. So Parvin created the green box and the orange box with the dedicated amount. Also I see the due date which Parvin already defined. So if that was not defined in the beginning I could change that here as well. Uh, set it to, to dedicated due date. I could change here the amount uh, of each product again um, to the to the real delivery quantities. I will go then to the next step. So I'm here now in the gluing folding carton area where I see now two operations. We call it the operations. So these are the actions that needs to be done on the machine for each of the products. So we have the green and the orange product in here. And for each one of them, I can select 
a machine where I want to produce it. So here I'll leave it as on the Diana. We have separate setup information in here. Also, we can define uh, a predefined um, estimated waste. Um, also for this one, which I can say, okay, we set up the machine of the, uh, for the same shape ID before, so we can reduce uh, the waste here for setting up. Um, I can do that. And also I go next to the next step where we define the sheet finishings and everything that happens on the printed sheet, which is mainly the die cutting. So here again, I have the operation for the die cutting where I select my machine where I want to do the die cutting. Um, also, I could adjust the waste. I could adjust um, setup times. What I can all, also do is um, I can define additional operations inside here. For example, if I want to do a laminating on that job, I can select yeah, a dedicated operation for laminating in here and uh, press OK. So I have it in here and um, I could also yeah, make my adjustment in here for setup time and everything. Um, when I'm finished with the sheet finishing operation definitions, I go to the next step. Here, I'm now on the press tab and I see I have one press operation, which I can define on where to print. I'll leave it on the Excel 106 in here. We have special options on the print step that we can split for the quantities, means if we have a long run and we want to split uh, the print amount into two operations, um, or we can split also the separations, means if we have a 10 color job and we only have a place on a six color machine that we need two press runs, we can split for separations and to have six and four color uh, operation runs on, the, on that machine. I go to the next step. Here we have the um, operations we could do on the material. We could do a pre-cut if uh, the material is larger than it uh, could be fit on the press. We don't have it here. So last step is then plate making. Also here I can select the sequence where I want to um, expose my, my plates. When I press the finish button, you see automatically my process net is adjusted. So I see here my plate making sequence. I see the press sequence, the sheet fed printing sequence, and they are connected. So that means after the plates are exposed, it's directly sent over all the information to the press. After the press is done, it's sent automatically over to the sheet finishing processes. So in this case, the laminating step and later on then also the die cutting step. And when this is done, the data is also sent over to the box making machine to the, to the Diana. So I save that here. And if we look at the workflow steps up here or the train we have here, up to now we created the imposition. Next step would be that we can make a proof. Of course, we could make a proof on the one up uh, up front uh, during the page processing, but here we could do a page proof, uh, sorry, an, an imposition proof, so proof of the layout on any connected um, proof device. Or what I could also do is just create an imposed PDF, which I can then well, send to um, a customer or to another um, yeah, printing device to, to make a, a plot or something. So imposed PDF contains all the information we have inside our layout. So we have all the marks, all the colors in there, and we could use that for yeah any purpose like proofs. Um, the next step here is then the plate making. So we can switch here of a preview, uh, a visual preview, or we can see the separations here. So we see all the colors where we are meant to make plates for. And here the same, if I want to start the plate making process, I can just easily drag and drop it to the sequence, which I predefined in the planning assistant. So now the rip is starting for ripping the data and later on sending the data to the 
CTP device. Uh, while this is running, I just um, switch my role a little bit and just have a little view to our digital scheduling board. So we have a plugin here, which we call the scheduler, um, where we have in general uh, two areas. In the upper area, we see uh, the overview uh, in, a, in a graphical display of my machines, which I have there, and uh, what is planned for uh, the actual day, the next day, the week, and so on. So you can easily switch here between different uh, views. And in the lower area, you have then the operation list. So here you see all the operations which are actually available for planning, uh, no matter if they are planned or not yet planned. And you can easily configure those lists um, to your needs. So in this case, I have uh, now a planning saying, show me or divide that to uh, already scheduled uh, operations and all unscheduled operations. So I see here now the newly created job is in here and uh, listed as an unscheduled operation. You could easily configure that to the needs you, you want to have. So you could, sorry, it's German here, but you could um, divide um, the list here by colors. That's saying, okay, we have dedicated jobs with always the same colors and we can group them here that we can easily uh, plan them one after the other on the same machine without having color change. Or what you could also do is um, uh, do it for the, uh, was it the, the, the paper checkpoint. So I can see directly uh, which printing material is available, the green ones, which is not available, and where we don't have any information in here uh, to have an easy overview. But in our case, I just want to plan this job here. So I have here all my unscheduled operation. Here again, I see the printing, I see the die cutting, and I see the laminating in here, and we have the folding cart and gluing in here. And I can easily drag and drop uh, my operation to the planning board saying, okay, I want to start tomorrow uh, at well, seven o'clock. And I just release that job in here. And I have all belonging operations linked to each other with a line here, which I can show or hide. And um, the planning automatically adjusts all the operations on the, on the free spaces. You can move that around also, you see some red marks in here, which you, when you fly over it, giving you information that you need to verify some checkpoints like the two availability, uh, same here, uh, which I will sh later on show. Um, if you have presses connected, you get directly feedback, which you see here by the smaller green bars. So you see on the XL106, there's actually a job running. When I fly over it, I see it's in progress and the job number is there and you even get a little thumbnail of it. And uh, similar to the power matrix, you also see that there's a job running at the moment um, on here. Um, yeah, that's because we have the, the online connection to the things. So after I made the planning here only for that one, I activate my schedules in here and get the feedback that this is done. So, um, in the meantime, I'm sure that the plates are exposed. So I jump back here to the cockpit. I see all the check marks are in here. Uh, as I told you, after the plates are done, it's automatically sent over to the press. So in the train here, when I go to the press, I see the operation in here, where we already have the information at the about the plant amounts and the plant waste for that operation. And additionally, when I open the properties, uh, during the RIP process, um, the ink profile is calculated. So we here, we see a little preview, which is transferred to the press, and we have the inking profile for the press below, which is also transferred to the press. You can click here and show dedicated separations in the preview as well as on the, on the ink profile. Also, you can make that larger, just make it a little bit larger. Um, 
So all this information is created inside the Prenect system and is transferred to the press. So uh, this information is then available on, at the press center, at the wall screen, and when you load the data, also the ink profile is loaded uh, to the machine, as well as the material information, which is listed here, is also transferred uh, and taken into account. What we also do is uh, we calculate the ink consumption as a pre-estimation during the ripping, where, uh, which is mainly important for the spot colors we have in here. Um, so we have a little table this is now a very, very short run job. So we have here now information about uh, that we need 16 gram of Pantone 7686 uh, for this job, but mainly if we have a long run, uh, we'll show you then that you need maybe two kilo of a, of a spot color and you can check up front if you have enough uh, ink in your stock to produce that job, <clears throat> sorry. Um, so here you see all the, the operations for the printing, as well as the other operation, which are predefined um, in the planning assistance. So here we see two operations for laminating. That's because uh, my device was set up to have an, a manual step and uh, the laminating step. And also I have the, the die cutting procedure in there. Um, additionally, what we see in here we get again the information about the article numbers and the article names which are on that press. We have information about the layout which was given from Signal Station. And also here we have again the plant amount and the plant waste. When the job is running, we also get feedback in, uh, about the uh, amounts which were actually produced. Finally, the last step on this um, uh, in the workflow step is the, the box making. And here we see again uh, the two products which we produce, the orange box and the green box. We see the article numbers and here again you have again uh, the little link to the 3D model which you could open then um, in, uh, in Acrobat. Um, so it's shown in quite several places inside the cockpit. Um, also here again, you see the operation, you have information about the, um, the procedure you need to, to set up on the, uh, on the Diana machine. So this information is also handed over to the data terminal or to the direct connection to the machine for setting up the machine. And again, the plant quantities um, and so on inside the cockpit. We have a portal inside Prenect. A portal means a web interface where we can easily connect uh, from anywhere in uh, in-house to uh, have an overview over the production. What you see inside the portal is depending on the user you log in. So every user can configure his own dashboards or you can make pre-definitions to user or user groups what they see in their, in their dashboard. Uh, this is just an example of my dashboard where I see a list of the actual jobs. So when I click in here, um, I think I should see uh, the job which I just created. So that was, sorry, two, six. Um, so I have this job which we just created also shown here in our portal. I can open the details and I have as an overview the process of the, the production of that job. So in this case, I see the page processing has been done, proof has been done, plates, of course, I have not sent it to the CTP, therefore this checkbox is not in there, but I could manually also set milestones in here. Um, I can also have a list, uh, look at the page list, so I see really the content of the job which was in there. Um, what's quite interesting is the plant operations are listed here again. So I see here, again, we have the imaging, we have the printing, we have the laminating, we have the die cutting, and then we have uh, for uh, each product, the folding box gluing uh, operations. Another interesting part, if you use the scheduler, is that for that job, you can have an overview about the planning, uh, about the plant um, processes, uh, for your production. So you see when the job is planned on the press, 
on the die cutting machine and on the um, polar box screwing machine. I'm just irritated about the, uh, the size um, and about the, the laminating process. So here, also in the reports, you can get information about the job notes. And if you have a real machine with measuring devices, inline measuring device or image control, you can have here the reports based on the, the measurements you've done during, uh, during printing. Um, in my dashboard, I have also an overview over my machine. So for every machine, I see what's actually going on. So I see which job is loaded on the machine. I can see the process. I can also uh, see as a tool tip uh, what's going on, if it's in setup mode, if it's idle, if it's waiting, see the good production in here. Also, I can well, go directly to the job, which I saw from here again. Also, I can jump from that part in here. So this is quite interesting to um, see. Also, I see as a, uh, a little process uh, display of the actual job. So this is close to be um, finished. Also, I get a little well report about the speed of that machine, not linked now to one dedicated job. Uh, this one is just for the whole day, you could see. Also, you see here the operations which are planned for the machine, as well as the yeah, pending operations were not really planned, but uh, are available on that machine. Another dashboard you can create is the so-called checkpoints, uh, which we saw in the scheduler. Uh, as you might remember, there was a red sign saying, uh, check the tool availability. And you can use these um, check uh, point dashboards here also to show them and also to give feedback. So in this case, um, the job which we just created here uh, has a red sign for, uh, sorry, that was a tool availability. And as an operator here, I can say, okay, the tool is available and I delivered it already to my die cutting machine. So I press this button and this information is also going then to the cockpit and is going to all the other connected systems uh, that you see now that the, the checkpoint is green. Um, yes, here are some other more dashboards which I don't go into, but you can go quite deep uh, about uh, giving, uh, seeing the feedback and the, the view inside the production. And as I said, um, you don't need a cockpit to use that portal. You can do it from anywhere inside the um, uh, your network, your house network, and you can configure that to every person that they only see what they really want to see. We have another tool inside the cockpit if we think about, if we talk about the shop flow data collection, uh, which is called the analyze point. So in here, we have the analyze point where we collect all the data and we can make statistics also in the machine. We have an overview about the, the actual machine, what's going on there. We can easily click on the jobs uh, to directly link on it. Or here on the jobs, I could also look at the job which we produced yesterday. Um, and as the overview, we see then here a little bit statistic how many time we spent on the setup and on the good production. We see all the operations in here and we got quite a lot of details on the operations. We see the printing, the die cutting and the, the folder, uh, the, the box folding and gluing. And also here we see the, uh, the press, uh, the, the, the plant and the really uh, produced amounts and waste inside here. And parallel, we have also information about the employees. So we can look at shift reports from, from operators, uh, which we can select here. We can make statistics about the uh, yeah, totalizer of a press over a year, or also about the plates used. So this is a demo system, not a real production system. So um, these statistics are not really uh, relevant. And also we can have performance reports, which in our case doesn't make really sense here because we're 
very rarely uh, printing on the on the simulators. So that was it. Looking at the job and all the link components around it, so the digital scheduler, the portal, and also for feedback, um, the analyze point. And I hope we could give a little impression on how to uh, make a production job for packaging through the whole process of Prenect.